What's up, people? Uh, I'm putting this video out there for people who are lost, who are unsure of what's happening here. You know, unsure of what lies after this this life that we have, and uh, and I know what's after here from seeing it, and it's very scary. And it's my duty, since I'm still here, to let you know what I've seen. Um, at a point in my life, I was drug addicted. I was an alcoholic. Um, my usual day was go to work. I always made good money, so I'd go to work, do my job. But after that party hard, drinking, drugging all night, come home early in the a.m., sometimes don't come home for a day or two, you know, uh, go on binges with the drugs and this and that, and basically, I, it was like the Wild West, I, anything went, I could do and did do whatever I wanted, I didn't care what anybody said, I had no consequences, I lived in excess and a total pagan lifestyle with not caring of anything. Now during that time, my whole life I've loved Jesus in my heart, you know, but you know, I, I prayed every night. I prayed with my kids, but I knew I was a hypocrite, you know. When I was home, I prayed with them, but it was like, you know, I pray with them and then I'm a screw up, you know what I'm saying? So I was hypocritical, but I knew my kids needed to know the truth, and the truth was God. I just wasn't following the truth. And I remember in my addiction every day saying, Lord, please don't take me today because I am not ready. And uh, I lived that pagan lifestyle for years. And one time I was on meth and I was up for five days. And, uh, and I mean five days up. No closing of the eyes, none of that, just a blink. You weren't sleeping, you were up. And uh, my body started to go into some kind of convulsion, no dan, whatever. I mean, my heart was jumping out of my chest, 911, ambulance, all that stuff. Uh, and I thought I was dying. And, um, you know, I said goodbye to my children, you know, because I didn't think I was going to see them again, you know, honestly. And uh, I was trying to give them, like, Lifelong lessons, as I can hear the ambulance a couple blocks away coming. Hey, guys, believe in God. Uh, don't be mad at God. Try and be like Job. You know, understand that the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. You know, trying to make all this stuff up in two seconds when nobody's listening because it's panic. You know, and uh, I thought that was the last time I was going to see my family. And uh, on that ambulance trip now to the hospital... I was out of my body three different times on the ceiling of the ambulance, you know, and I'm sitting there and I'm floating and I'm looking down and I see my body and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, what did I do? You know, I'm outside of my body. How is this possible? You know, is this, is this what I made of my life? You know, I had everything. The Lord, I, I could see the Lord gave me kids, three beautiful children, gave me a wife. And look what I've done. I, I've ignored everything. I've thrown, I've spit in his face at every possible chance. And just did what I wanted to do. What was pleasing to me, to my flesh. So, as I'm going through that, you know, peace, craziness in my body. Peace, craziness. Now, I say peace because I was out of my body and I wasn't in the, you know, convulsions or whatever that I was in when I was in my body. When I was out of it, I was cool. I was just, you know, it was real peaceful, but I was in pitch blackness. So it was peace, but I was scared. I was like, what is this? You know what I mean? Where am I at and what's going to happen now? The transition from my body was just like me stepping over. You know what I'm saying? So I realized... I don't know where I'm at, and I was pretty scared to be in that darkness, even though it was peace. So, I remember, uh, you know, going to the emergency room, and they, you know, putting IVs and all in me, and anyway, I just said, Lord, if you want to take me tonight, 
then I accept your will, but if you let me live, I'll do better. And with that, I sat back, relaxed, and, you know, thank God, I stabilized, and, uh, and I made it, you know, maybe 10 hours later, I was discharged, you know, and, uh, I remember one of the guys saying to me, um, one of the ambulance guys coming in later on in the shift, he came over and he said, oh, you made it, man. And I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I was thanking him for helping me and all. And he said, you know, I seen guys come in here in less shape than you and leave with uh, a sheet over them. And he said, I didn't think, you know, I wasn't sure if you were going to make it. And I thought to myself, man, you know, I came that close to death. And, uh, but by the grace of God, I returned home that night, or early the next morning. And uh, from that point on, I sought out detox and all that. And within a couple of days, I was in a detox and trying to do my thing and get sober. So when I get done with that stuff, that program, uh, I come home, I, you know, feel myself out, get used to myself a little bit, and I go back to work. Now, when I go back to work, first day I'm back to work, a guy's chopping out some heroin. So it's like, I go to step towards him, you know, because I see the heroin, my mind's telling me, go get a bump, you know, but it's like, wait, I can't do that, you know, I, I gotta live a sober life now. So for six months, I tried to live sober, and I did live sober. I didn't drink, uh, you know, I was still smoking cigarettes and stuff, but no weed, no cig uh, no beer, you know, no alcohol, no drugs. So, and even during that time, you know, I, I couldn't leave the job. You know, I had a prayer book with me and I would, you know, there'd be times I just pulled a prayer book out and start praying to God or reading a page or two because I needed help. You know, I wanted to go to the bar or this or that. I couldn't drive around town because every street in that town I had partied on or done something on it would trigger me. And uh, I was worried I might fall into drinking again. So, for six months, I chased God. Now, I didn't do it right because I didn't know how to get to God. I didn't know how to approach God or how to come to God. I would go to church at break time or lunch time, sit in church, pray. But, you know, at the same time, I was looking into other things like the occult. I was looking into astral travel psychics, mediums, I was looking into past lives, um, I had even attended uh, some uh, big uh, hotel or something, one of these famous uh, psychic mediums, you know, there's maybe been a hundred people there, and you pay a hundred bucks and go see them, and it was like, I was trying with all my might to seek out the truth, but I was, in, you know, trying to come to Christ and also bringing in the occult, which you know, isn't going to weigh out. You can't be with Jesus if you're with the occult. So I was confused and I really did not know how to seek him out. Now after six months of sobriety, I uh, I started to get weak and irritated. and Because uh, it was so hard for me every single day to get home. You know, to get my butt in that house without pulling out of my driveway and going to get something to drink. You know, it was such a tough struggle. And looking back, it was amazingly tough. Uh, but I started to get irritated. And, you know, I said to my wife, six months today. She said, six months for what? And I said, six months I've been sober. She's like, oh, that's good. I thought, that's good. You know, now being an adult, I'm supposed to do stuff for myself. But at that point, I had struggled through so much every day. I want to, you know... I want a huge uh, party or something, rang, you know, run a parade down the street or something. Let's break out a celebration. You know, this is six months, man, every day. Some of my days feel like they're 100 years from all this, you know. So with that, I was like, you know what, okay, or that's good, good. You know, I'll show you good, you know. So my whole mindset changed right there. And, uh, and not that it's her fault, but, you know, I was probably looking for a reason to do that because I was already irritated so all of a sudden I go back and I go back to drinking and then I go back to drugging and what they say is true when you go back you go back harder each time and that was definitely 
holding true in this instance. Now, now when I went back this time, I felt like such a failure. How could I, how could I have been out of my body three times? Been through all this stuff, almost died, you know. And there's countless other times in your addiction where you were in a situation you could have died. And, uh, and I'm still drinking again now. And I'm drinking hard now. Harder and harder and more and more. If I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I'm drinking the beer, smoking a joint, hitting the bowl, whatever. I used to tell people I drink when my eyes are open. It wasn't a joke. I'd get a 30-pack, set it right next to me because there's no reason to put it in the fridge because I'm going to kill it before you can drink your six-pack most of the time. Uh, I was insane. Now I fell into drugs and coke and whatever else I could get my hands on at this point. And it got me to the point where I was going to kill myself. Before I always said, I'm not going to kill myself because I love my family. Well, let me tell you something. Never say never because I got to a point where I said, I'm done. You know, I got to the point where I said, my family's better off without me because I can't even go anywhere without drinking. No matter where I go, I have to drink. Whether I'm putting it in a soda can, wherever I'm at driving around, you know, McDonald's cups with the straw through a beer can and a McDonald's cup looking like I'm drinking McDonald's, you know, and coffee cups, you know, beer. It's insane. So I honestly thought I'm better off dead, you know. They'll be sad for a minute, but they'll get over it because who needs a sloppy drunk dad, you know, nobody. So I came across a weapon that I was going to shoot myself with. And, uh, Put the bullets in it, lock the door in my house, sitting there with a uh, the gun in my mouth and ready to shoot myself. The only thing I was thinking is which way to aim the gun so I don't mess this up. I didn't want to mess up killing myself. You know, In my pagan life, I remember seeing Rotten.com, a guy tried to kill himself and messed it up. His whole face was gone. He had tubes going down him. I'm like, that's the last thing I need, you know. The bullet was so lovely to think about. You know, one bullet can take away all this mess and pain I'm in. You know, count me in. And that's how I felt. So I had the gun loaded in my mouth, and I'm trying to figure out, like, which way to make sure I kill myself. And something hits me. Bam! Like, you know, guardian angel, something telling me, hey, your kids are home. You know, your wife is home. It's bad enough you're killing yourself, but, you know, don't let them hear the shot that did it. Don't let them come in and find you, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, all right, you know. And I thought, you know what, it is horrible I'm doing this, so let me just wait till tomorrow and uh, I'll kill myself down on the beach, you know what I mean? And uh, so I unloaded and put everything away up, you know. I hid it up near the ceiling there and locked all the doors and, you know, left my room and went out there and I watched my kids play. My wife talked to them regular, you know. Because I didn't let on that anything was wrong at all because I never showed any kind of uh, I need help kind of thing. Everybody would have been shocked. I had hid everything my whole life. So, you know, I was used to hiding stuff. And uh, it's a weird feeling to watch your kids playing and your wife and you know in your head, they have no clue I'm going to kill myself tomorrow. You know, it's a crazy, crazy feeling to have. The night went on regularly, laughed, joked, whatever. Said prayers with the kids, put them to bed. Good night to the wife. We went to bed. As I'm sleeping, all of a sudden I'm in hell. Now when I say hell, I mean I mean this cave. The cave is humongous. I can't even describe the, you know, over to my left, there's like a, a two mile wide crater with orange like yellowish, reddish flames coming up and the screams are millions at the same time. And the thought that hit my head was like, that's where Hitler's at. That's where the major people who are leading a lot of people to death are, you know, or did have or whatever, or where they will be going. And where I was, was up on this ledge and there was two like, uh, entrance like cave entrances there you know what I'm saying I didn't go into them but I could see them and uh, 
I had a demon. There was demons all over, and there was people just screaming all over. And a demon would grab my right arm and pull and would rip my arm off where I would, my whole arm would come off, and I'd see the skin hanging and the veins and the blood. And, you know, the first two or three times you see that, you're, you're still used to thinking how we do on earth. And on earth, we're like, oh, no, what panic. But there, it's different. So you're shocked. But he'd pull it off, and a couple seconds later, it would be back on again, and he would do the same thing all over again. And he'd be holding my arm, looking at me, laughing, because he just wants to see the fear, the fright on my face. So in front of me stood this, only way I can describe it is a monster. And I'm talking like four foot wide, huge shoulders. Um, like Sully off of uh, Monsters, Inc., if you ever seen that. And that was a cool movie and all, but this guy was like evil, huge, big like that, huge. Um, like knives, you know, huge claws, huge. And these things, he would, he would just go like this, wham, and come off from this side. And when he'd hit me, he'd just rip my stomach to shreds and my whole insides would fall on the ground of the cave. And I'd look down and... You know, once again, you're shocked. How's this happening? You know, can't, if it happens here, we're dead. But there, by the time he'd pull his hand back again, I was healed. And he would do it all over again, and he'd laugh at me. So the whole thing there, they wanted to laugh. They wanted to see your fear. They wanted to torture you. And they were content to do this forever. You absolutely knew that in your heart as you are there. But I remember cursing at him, saying, Do you really think I give a F what you're doing think about it on this earth I'd run crazy from this guy but there I, he didn't even affect me because I couldn't feel my stomach being tore open I couldn't feel my arm being ripped off and even with the smells and even with the screams the panic the chaos constantly the chaos for me was the separation from God knowing that I can't, I can pray all I want. I can't get my prayers up to him. It's over, you know. It's like grabbing a rubber ball trying to throw it through the ceiling. It's not going to happen, you know. And for, I realized instantly that if, as long as you're living, as long as you're breathing and walking on this earth, I don't care if you're atheist, I don't care what you are, new age and this and that, wake up because as long as you're breathing, you have a shot to pray to Jesus, to drop to your knees, to ask God to come into your life, to save your life, and to turn your life over to God. And you can do that as long as you're breathing. Once you breathe your last breath, the dishes are done. Whatever you've accumulated to that point will be what happens. And a lot of people say, well, my God isn't a, isn't a, uh, he's a loving God, and, and there is no hell, and he wouldn't put you in hell, and he wouldn't do this and that. Let me tell you something. That's all nice and everything, and you can keep that where you keep it. But hell is real. And you know who put yourself in hell? You. Because you're shown how you lived. You see everything you've ever done. And why? as you know, as you see, you, you judge yourself. Oh, I, I wasn't this good. I did this. I did that. He has a law for us to follow. And if you don't follow it, you're going to be in hell. In hell, my heart wants to just explode just thinking of that place. I wish I had a thousand years to live here to do good every day I could just to try to assure myself that I don't go there. You know what I'm saying? I can't even think about going back there. I try my best today to give glory to God because I'm so scared of that place but I'm very scared for the people who don't believe in it because it is so frightening. I'm sure that other people who have had these experiences felt different things in hell. Myself, all I felt was the separation from God. Not one other thing bothered me as far, you know what I'm saying? Like nothing else could ever overtake that pain. And I couldn't believe that I was stuck here for eternity to be tortured and to always know that I had everything. I had my wife, I had my kids, I had all the opportunities in the world, and I didn't make any of them work. I squandered everything. 
and it had brought me to this point for eternity. And with all this going on, I'm praying to myself and I'm saying, Lord God, please look on my actions and look on, you know, how my heart is, you know what I mean? Like, any actions that I've done good, please, Father, you know, have mercy on me. Like, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I've always loved you, but my actions didn't always show that. Many times I went against what you wanted. And I was begging and begging, and all of a sudden this this light hit this cave where every divot was just sticking out. And you could see everything in this cave now was lit up. You knew instantly. Your soul knew this is Jesus. Everything was, was stopped immediately. All the screams stopped. These demons and monsters that were pulling on me and, and hurting me were in these caverns. I could see them blinking, but they couldn't be in Jesus' sight. He shut it down. Now I went to look up and I thought, I better, I don't want to offend them. So I just looked down and I said, Lord God, I'm not worthy of you or anything. Please help me, Jesus. This and that. Next thing I know, I look up and here's Christ. Just right here. I'm on my knees. He's a couple feet up looking at me with this beautiful smile. With the biggest smile, the most. He's so beautiful. Uh, he had a, a white robe on with a brown sash. Yeah, I mean, he was unbelievably beautiful. He's darker than uh, a lot of the pictures that I've seen. But what an amazing sight. You know, really, truly. Unbelievable, you know. And I've been searching for a picture that comes close to showing, hey, this is what he looked like, you know. But uh, I haven't found one just like it yet. Um, now, as he looks at me, I'm thinking to myself, this is amazing, you know. This whole story, I know he crucified, he died for our sins and all that. But to see him, to know that you're sitting in front of the Son of God, that he's real, that he, he, he's taking time out to come to me, he's helping me in hell. Is unbelievable and I can't understand it to this day I still can't wrap my head around any of this you know um, I don't understand why I was saved or any of this but he looked at me with so much beauty like I was the best thing in the world and I thought to myself on earth I'm ready to kill myself and and this guy's looking at me like I'm the best thing he's ever seen and I, I couldn't you know right then you imagine what is happening here you know right then you understand the amount of mercy that he has the amount of love that he has for us it's unfathomable we can never understand to begin to understand it because we don't have love we don't have the capacity like that uh, it's unbelievable how much he loves us and I said I'm sorry and I love you and he grabbed me with his right arm pulled me up and we just ascended through this cave and into bliss you know into a blue sky of bliss and he said to me, and I quote, as we, as he talked, as we talked and conversed, we all, we, we talked telepathically. There was no mouth movement at all or anything like that. Uh, he said, and this is quote, I am going to take away your sins. You have suffered long enough. And with that, I was shocked because my, my addictions are going, you know, they're the reason I'm, I'm dying here, you know what I mean? This is the reason I was going to kill myself, because I can't live a life without addiction. So now he says, I'm going to take your addictions. You have suffered long enough. And I'm like, wow, you know, this is amazing. And uh, at another point I said to him, you know, just let me bring some of this back, please, Lord. You know, let me, let me bring some of this situation somehow in a bottle let me jar it let me do something but let me bring it back and show people and say hey look see this let them look at it and feel what I'm feeling and there wouldn't be any questions of what's right and wrong and it would solve a lot of the things on this earth everybody would understand you are the way but uh and this is funny you know he he, he always was smiling anyway but he just said to me that's not the way this works and I thought that that was funny coming from Jesus, you know. Maybe it's not. I don't know. That's how I took it, though. And uh, That's not the way this works. So, you know what? We have to go off of faith and hope that uh, people see. You know what I'm saying? But 
And that's why I'm doing this, trying to tell my story and get it out to people because I don't want to show up in front of him again and say, hey, I didn't do nothing with what you did for me, man, you know? And uh, now I feel the time is right for me to start moving with the message, and that's why I'm doing this. But he took my addictions. Now, when I woke up that night in bed, whatever, 3 o'clock in the morning, something like that, I woke my wife up and said to her, it's over. She said, what's over? I said, Jesus took took my addictions. And she said, well, hallelujah. Now, my wife never says hallelujah, you know. And if you're an addict and you've been telling, you know, you've told everybody and their mother that you're going to quit, it's over, you're done, I'm going to live straight, everything's over, you know, it don't work. But here she, she just accepted it totally. So I thought about that. And months later, I asked her, I said, what did you see the Holy Spirit in my face? Is that why you said hallelujah? And here I had forgot that she had contacts back then and her eyes weren't even in. Her contacts were, you know, not even in. She couldn't see anything. She said, I couldn't see. She's like, I just felt something in your voice that put my soul at ease. And I believed. And I was like, oh, hallelujah. So the amazing part is this. Of course, it's amazing. I've been to hell. I've been with Christ himself and conversed and seen him and his beauty. But from that moment of waking up, I have never drank another beer, done another drug, hallelujah. And it's not from me and it's not some mind thing. Uh, oh, he had a dream and he talked himself into not drinking anymore and all that garbage. New age things and philosophies and all that stuff, you can keep it. I was in hell and I seen Jesus and he rescued me from it. And if he didn't, I would have killed myself that following day. No doubt. No doubt in my mind. So, it's amazing. Because I drank every... I drank at least every hour of the day. You know, I was high for years. Not days, years. Weed, drugs, alcohol... My body was on all the time. I went to bed drunk, woke up drunk. You know, I, that's how I rolled for years. And to stop instantly, to stop to where it, it, it's like it never it never existed. You know, and now my life. This is two and a half years now since this time, and it, it, it's like it never happened to me. I think of the old stuff I did, the craziness, the fighting. You know. The uh, tough guy, you know, construction, drinking, drugging, you know, all that alpha male fighting bull crap, you know. Um, it's all empty, you know. It's all junk, and it's all real shallow. And, uh, you know, God took me from somebody like that to what I am today. Now, I'm not perfect by any means, and I'm a screw up just like everybody else, but I'm trying my best and trying to give my life to Christ. And uh, it's amazing what he can do. He's taken me from that and who I used to be and, and shown me so many different things. I know my kids now. I know my wife now. I come home all the time now. I, I, uh, you know, my whole life is spent to have fun with them, make memories with them, you know, be the priest of this family, of my family, of making sure that we stay on point with God. You know what I'm saying? And, and we all have our own walk with them and everything like that. And it's like beforehand, before this, we never, pr you know, I prayed with them, but we never went to church or anything like that. Or, and it's amazing. It's really so amazing that it's very simple. Like the Bible says, knock and it will be opened, you know. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, you know. Now, I'm not a... A Bible quoting guy and all that, you know, and I'm really into the word now and trying, you know, to learn it. But uh, a lot of people can spit different uh, verses and everything like that, and that's awesome, you know. And we should know it as uh, lovers of Christ. We should. We should know the word of God so we can empower ourselves, you know what I mean? Put the, put the uh, armor of God on us. 
But guys, this is a uh, this is a true miracle. A true miracle of life. He simply just took my drug addiction and my alcohol addiction and took it away. That's it. No dream could ever do that. You know, I've had dreams before. I'm still an addict when I wake up. So, for everybody out there that's trying to figure out how this happened, you're staring at a miracle. Am I something special? No. I'm regular. And I mess up every day, you know what I mean? But I am a miracle in the fact and in the eyes that Jesus Christ did come and pull me out of hell. So, I've been to hell and I've seen Jesus. Okay? It's amazing. And I want to share it with you because for all the addicts out there, for everybody who suffered through abuse and just thinks, you know, I just want to end it. You know, I just want to get out of here. I just want to kill myself because I can't deal with all this stuff. I, uh, you know, I, I'm not making anybody happy. I ruin everything I, I ever touch. You know what I'm saying? That's what addiction will do. It will rip every single thing in your life and trash it and make you feel so worthless but really guys all we got to do is just lay it down lay it down take all of that negativity every single thing that is on you and lay it down at the foot of his cross lay it down at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ and say I love you and please come into my heart and I can't deal with this I need your help because I can't deal with it Please take it from me. I can't deal with it. And if you're not going to take it, then give me the strength to get through this. And that was one thing I remember saying to him, you know, when I was sitting playing with the gun. I said, Lord, you know, you say you never give me anything I can't handle. Well, I can't handle this, you know. And to see how he just came right in and stopped me at the most opportune time is amazing. I surely... It's hard for me to explain it to you. I'm sure, I really hope that you understand what I'm saying because uh, it's absolutely true. And as I tell you, I have the images in my head. I always have the image of Christ with me ever since. And I think that's because, uh, you know, sometimes the enemy will come in and say, that didn't happen, Jesus don't love you, this and that. But, you know, I just say, be gone, Satan. You know what I mean? I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ because I can see Christ with me all the time. I'm very aware after this whole episode of spiritual warfare, you know, there is a battle for each and every one of our souls every day, gang, you know, and uh, I would just tell you that I don't, I don't, I'm not here to preach about some church or this or that, Catholic, Protestant, whatever, okay, what I want to tell you is that Jesus Christ is real, he died for our sins, he is the son of God, he loves us. Hallelujah. Believe it. His mercy is unfathomable. Give your life up to Him. If you come to Him, you will feel the Holy Spirit eventually. And the Holy Spirit, when that hits you, will light your body with so much energy that no drugs in the world could ever light your energy up. You know, give your body that kind of energy. It's amazing. So you will feel the Holy Spirit, you know, and as you go and you cleanse yourself and you try and do whatever you can do, but please don't get caught up in, in the times of where we're at and, and all the things that are empty. If you notice people, you know, they'll, they'll buy this house, they'll buy this house, even the multi-billionaires, you know, they'll buy a house that's $150 million, stay in it for two years, move to another one, because why? That one wasn't good enough, you know, because... You're never going to quench your thirst. Everything is just for a season. No matter what you have, it's just for a season. I've known people with mansions and pools in their homes and elevators and, you know, all kinds of craziness. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollar cars and all this and it's empty. They don't care because they don't have what they're chasing. And you know what? In Christ Jesus, that's the only thing that will quench your thirst gang the rest of these things are empty they're for image they're for self and uh, I really hope that you just come to Jesus forget about whatever churches you look at and you want to do and God bless you with whatever keep Jesus your focus pray 
pray in private, fast. Don't tell people when you're fasting. Somebody's bothering you, pray for them. Help the poor, help the people in need. Help those that nobody's helping. Go help the homeless. You know, it's funny, they got all these things that are all over the place with help the dogs, help the animals, oh, homeless dogs. And, you know, what about people? You know, we're in America. You know, you're worried about housing a dog. House the guy that's down the block. You know what I'm saying? Look at a human. You know, because in order to help a human, it really takes something. To get a dog, don't take much. Human, you really got to show. So, what's your character? Guys, I don't know the answers. All I do know is this. Jesus Christ is really loves you. My advice to you is to pray to Jesus. Read the Bible. It's the Word of God. And try and live your life by it. You'll see that doing that, your life will change. Things will get better. And miracles will come up upon you in your own way. And it may not be the way I did it, you know. And chances are it probably won't because that's an amazing event. And at the same time that I was saved and he came to hell to get me, somebody else on this earth had killed himself over the same addictions and things that I had been through at the same point. But they were allowed to kill themselves and I was intervened for it. So I just want to tell you, I love you as I pray that I see is all in heaven. Do your best. Give glory to God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, and God bless you.